Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Joan Fontaine and Olivia de Havilland, despite their wildly different surnames, were sisters. However, things were complicated between them even from childhood, when they became bitter rivals from the start. The rivalry between the actresses encompassed their childhood, careers, love lives and even the Academy Awards. Why Olivia de Havilland had the most notorious sibling rivalry in Hollywood. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Olivia and Joan were childhood rivals. The lifelong feud between the sisters Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine. Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine were born 15 months apart and both found success as actresses in Hollywood's golden age. But instead of bringing them together, these similarities exacerbated a rivalry that sprang up in childhood and lasted a lifetime. Yet even though they were rivals who became estranged, Olivia and Joan managed to respect and even admire each other. In a feud, you always care what the other is up to, of course. Dame Olivia Mary de Havilland was born July 1st, 1916 in Tokyo, Japan. She was an American motion picture actress remembered for the lovely and gentle ingenues of her early career as well as for the later, more substantial roles she fought to secure. Her sister Joan arrived the following year. The sisters had a lifelong feud that allegedly began over competition for their mother's affections. Joan later changed her last name from de Havilland to Fontaine, which she took from her stepfather, to distance herself from her sister. The daughter of a British patent attorney, de Havilland, and her younger sister, Joan Fontaine, moved to California in 1919 with their mother and actress. While attending school, de Havilland was chosen from the cast of a local California production of A Midsummer Night's Dream to play Hermia in a 1935 Warner Brothers film version of that play. As the sweet-tempered beauty to Errol Flynn's gallant swain, she appeared in many costume adventure movies of the 1930s and 40s, including Captain Blood, The Charge of the Light Brigade, The Adventures of Robin Hood, and They Died With Their Boots On. She also played romantic leading roles in Strawberry Blonde, Hold Back the Dawn, and The Male Animal and portrayed Melanie Wilkes in Gone with the Wind. Still, de Havilland was unsatisfied with the studio's tendency to shove her into romantic roles. In 1939, she achieved a small victory when she convinced Jack Warner, with the help of his wife Anne, whom de Havilland befriended and beseeched, to loan her to MGM to play the brainy, selfless Melanie Hamilton Wilkes in Gone with the Wind, a role that she felt was finally equal to her acting chops. She earned an Academy Award nomination for the performance in the Best Supporting Actress category. Still, when she returned to Warner Brothers, executives continued to send her scripts that she felt underutilized her talent. She rejected them outright, leading the studio to issue her several punitive suspensions. When de Havilland's contract expired after seven years, Warner told her that she was still the studio's property, owing to the time she had lost while not working. De Havilland sued and took the case all the way to the California Supreme Court, which ultimately found in her favour thereby setting a new rule in Hollywood that no studio could hold a performer beyond seven calendar years. In 1945, de Havilland won a precedent-setting case against Warner Brothers, which released her from a six-month penalty obligation appended by the studio to her seven-year contract. Free to take more challenging roles, she gave Academy Award-winning performances in To Each His Own and The Heiress. Warner Brothers now had no recourse. They and all of the studios who used suspensions to control their talent had lost. Olivia de Havilland was finally free. 
Dr Haviland was open about the fact that she craved heftier roles in large part because she desperately wanted to win an Oscar. In particular, she wanted to win an Oscar before her younger sister Joan Fontaine, who signed a contract with RKO Pictures the year before de Havilland signed with Warner Brothers. Fontaine ended up beating de Havilland to Best Actress in a leading role, but not by much. She won for her role in Hitchcock's Suspicion in 1942, and de Havilland won for playing a desperate mother in To Each His Own five years later, and won again for playing a wealthy woman who is constantly manipulated by the men around her in The Heiress. The sisters had one of the longest running and most well documented family feuds in Hollywood history, even once going for years without speaking. This rivalry grew in the press into its own cottage industry, prompting constant tabloid covers and a host of dime store biographies. The story was catnip to the public, famous sisters battling it out for top billing. But toward the end of her life, Fontaine insisted that it had all been overblown. Two nice girls liking each other isn't copy, Fontaine told a reporter in 2013. Let me just say, Olivia and I have never had a quarrel. Olivia and Joan didn't get along as children. Younger sister Joan felt Olivia was favoured by their mother. Olivia once said, our biggest problem was that we had to share a room. Though they did occasionally play together, their clashes were frequent, featuring slaps, Joan and hair pulling, Olivia. Joan also accused Olivia of tearing up her outgrown clothes, because she didn't want them to go to her younger sister, and also of breaking Fontaine's collarbone when she tried to pull her older sister into a swimming pool. A profile of the two in Life magazine in 1942 revealed one low point in the relationship. At the age of nine, Joan decided she would kill her sister. She thought it all out carefully. She would let Olivia hit her once and then again in silence. But after the third blow, she would plug Olivia between the eyes. Joan's plan was to plead self-defence, but fortunately for American cinema, she didn't go through with it. Instead, the rancour between the two sisters would simply take different forms as they grew older. Joan initially lived in Olivia's shadow in Hollywood. When Joan returned home from spending a couple of years with their expat father in Japan, she found her sister on the verge of a career in Hollywood and decided she wanted the same thing. Olivia instead tried to send Joan to finishing school. Olivia later admitted to Vanity Fair I suppose the way I saw it then was that I wanted Hollywood as my domain, and I wanted San Francisco society to be hers. But Joan insisted to her older sibling, I want to do what you're doing. So Joan came to live with Olivia and their mother in Hollywood, but Olivia, who was under contract with Warner Brothers, didn't want Joan to work at the same studio as her, and as she believed there was room for only one de Havilland in Hollywood, she encouraged her sister to use a different last name. Joan didn't like this, but when a fortune teller advised her that she needed a stage name ending in E to achieve success, she began using Fontaine, her stepfather's name. Yet the name change remained a source of bitterness for Joan, who later said, Joan Fontaine, I don't know who she is. She also hated having to be her sister's chauffeur, driving her to and from the studio, even though Olivia had given Joan somewhere to live in Los Angeles as she tried to launch an acting career. The sisters became Hollywood rivals. While Olivia found success co-starring with Errol Flynn in Captain Blood and The Adventures of Robin Hood, Joan flopped with Fred Astaire in A Damsel in Distress. Joan did manage to marry one of her sister's old boyfriends, tying the knot with Brian Ahern in 1939. At the time, a woman getting married was seen as a way of completing her life, so marrying before her older sister was a coup. Olivia's career reached new heights when she played Melanie in Gone with the Wind, and Joan's took off when she starred in Rebecca. Still, the sisters didn't let the other taste success without claiming some credit. 
Joan says that when she'd been turned down from Melanie for being too stylish, she'd suggested her sister for the part. And when Olivia's Warner Brothers contract kept her from starring in Rebecca, she agreed Joan would be perfect for the role because her sister was blonde and co-star Laurence Olivier had dark hair. The sisters' rivalry played out in front of the world at the Academy Awards ceremony in 1942. Olivia and Joan were both nominated for Best Actress, Olivia for Hold Back the Dawn and Joan for Suspicion. Olivia was expected to win, but Joan received the Oscar instead. She then seemed to ignore her sister's congratulations when she went to collect her statuette. When Olivia was triumphant herself on Oscar night in 1947, winning the Best Actress Academy Award for To Each His Own, she, in turn, snubbed her sister. But this wasn't exactly payback for Joan's earlier snubbing. Instead, it was payback for Joan's sniping, after Olivia had married novelist Marcus Goodrich. Joan had said, All I know about him is that he's had four wives and written one book. Too bad it's not the other way around. The final straw between Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine occurred when their mother died in 1975. According to Fontaine, de Havilland never invited Fontaine to the funeral, while de Havilland claimed that Fontaine had apparently had better things to do, given that this was the mother who openly picked favourites with her kids. We're inclined to believe either story might be true. Either way, the sisters didn't speak to each other again until Fontaine's death more than 35 years later. Olivia and Joan were estranged when Joan died. Olivia and Joan had some closer moments in the years to come, such as when they attended a party for Marlena Dietrich in 1967. But when their mother became ill with terminal cancer, Olivia went to take care of her while Joan was on tour with a play. In Joan's 1978 memoir, No Bed of Roses, which Olivia dubbed No Shred of Truth, she didn't hold back from sharing her resentments toward her sister, such as the paralysis that overcame her when she won her Oscar, giving her flashbacks to their childhood animosity. In an interview with People to promote the book, Joan said, You can divorce your sister as well as your husband's. I don't see her at all, and I don't intend to. She also declared, I got married first, got an Academy Award first, had a child first. If I die, she'll be furious, because again, I'll have got there first. At an Oscars reunion in 1979, the two were placed on separate ends of the stage. Ten years later, Joan changed hotel rooms when she found out she was booked next to Olivia's. But contrary to what Joan had expected, Olivia expressed her sadness after her sister's death in 2013. In an interview for her 100th birthday in 2016, Olivia addressed her relationship with Joan, saying, A feud implies continuing hostile conduct between two parties. I cannot think of a single instance wherein I initiated hostile behaviour. Olivia also stated she had sometimes been defensive and added, on my part, it was always loving, but sometimes estranged and, in the later years, severed. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the sisters' lifelong feud?